Hi guys, so if you've been watching my channel, you know I recently bought a red-eyed green tree frog and I set it up in this little enclosure and it's been like Christmas every few days. We go to the reptile store and we buy something else for the frog and the, the frog enclosure is looking really awesome. Check it out. I wanted to show you how it's coming along and we've been putting a whole bunch of stuff in there and <laughs> little Mr. Sticky on the back there just kind of hangs out all day and every now and then at night he'll come out and <laughs> hunt down a, a little cricket. We keep little tiny crickets in there and now that it's a little bit colder in the room the fog in there is really intense. It looks pretty eerie and uh, and, and so, so we decorated it with with moss and we put some soil in there and we put some live plants and believe it or not, I have figured out how to get away from cleaning this enclosure. And I can make it self-cleaning so you never have to clean it. It's pretty awesome. And it all comes down to two things, isopods and springtails. So the idea of a self-cleaning enclosure is, say for example, if you go out in the forest, the forest is actually kind of a self-cleaning environment, I guess you would say. Everything falls off the trees, all the leaves, and the leaves fall to the ground, and you get the mold and the fungus. And then underneath the leaf litter in the forest, there's little tiny microscopic uh, organisms that actually break down the mold and the fungus and some of the decaying leaves and matter. And one of those is uh, an isopod. <laughs> and I remember when I was a small, when I was a kid, we used to actually call them roly polies because they'd roll up into a little ball and you could just kind of, you know, roll them across the concrete. <laughs> little roly polies. And some people call them so, bu so bugs or pill bugs. And I found out there's actually 10,000 species of isopods and and some of them are marine some of them are actually in the ocean under the water but but there's a lot of them that are terrestrial in the forests and some of them are pretty amazing i actually just bought some from the pet store and i wanted to show them to you before i put them in this enclosure and uh if you start looking around for isopods and the different colors and patterns on the internet it'll blow your mind the different colors and patterns and, and the little cup that I bought, I, I think I paid like $10 for it, but I've seen in some pet stores where they have really fancy isopods, and they'll sell them for $60 for a little cup of uh, isopods, and there's not that many in there. There's probably a couple dozen in there. So let me show you these isopods, and uh, I'll show what they look like. So take a look at this. I have two containers. One, I have my springtails. We'll save that for later, and I want to show you first of all my isopods and I picked these up just today at the pet store and it's kind of interesting they put leaves in here and apparently the isopods uh, eat the leaves and they kind of work in conjunction with the springtails because the springtails uh, the springtails actually eat the fungus and the mold the, the smaller microscopic um, stuff that's kind of a decaying matter and then the isopods will eat the bigger stuff, which is kind of interesting. So, <laughs> I was actually looking on the internet, and there's a lot of people that have whole collections of isopods, and a whole bunch of different kinds of isopods. And my isopods, it seems like they're definitely different than what most people have. These seem to have a little bit of orange in them. I don't know if you can really pick it up on camera. And I can definitely tell these guys don't like the light. They're afraid of the light. So they're kind of kind of <laughs> digging down and hiding. But there's quite a few in here. They're just, they're just kind of hiding. So as far as the care of isopods, uh, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of people on the internet kind of make a substrate for them. And, and it's really simple. All, all it is is part potting soil. And usually they add some sphagnum moss and then some leaf litter and kind of just jumble it all together and spray it down with water and that's pretty much it and they definitely have to have a humid environment and you don't want them to dry out and you don't want it to be too wet and you definitely want to keep adding leaf litter if there's not enough because that is their food source and you can see in here that they're pretty prolific breeders as far as what I've seen and you can see the little tiny babies in here already and I'm thinking that um, 
you know, if we can get these guys going really good, you can you can actually see some really tiny microscopic babies down there, and I think they'll they'll really take off if we can get them established. Okay, so I'm going to put this leaf litter back in my isopods, <laughs> and I want to show you what springtails look like. And springtails are kind of the microscopic counterpart to isopods. And I, I don't even know if you're going to be able to, to pick these up. Oh, I guess you can. And they're really, really tiny. And people, people, um, they, they grow them kind of on this, uh, it's almost like charcoal. They say you can use um, like uh, activated carbon or... Uh, so you can use you can even use wood ashes from your fire pit and just kind of wash it wash off the the, uh, the the charcoal that's left from a from a fire from either a fire pit inside or from a campfire and most people when they're when they're cultivating them in, a, in an enclosure like this um, they feed them yeast <laughs> little packets of yeast which is pretty fascinating and I don't know if you can really if you can really see them very good, but you can, <laughs> if I kind of move them right, you can see they're kind of crawling around. They're, <laughs> they're, I think they're afraid of the light, but they're t the tiny, tiny little white blips. You can barely see them coming in and out. And the interesting thing I found about them is that they say they're, um, they kind of congregate together. So, so usually if you find springtails, you'll find a whole bunch of them instead of just finding like a couple of them and they kind of move around in like whole colonies which is kind of interesting and you almost can't even see them they're so microscopic so one other thing I should mention about springtails is the reason they call them springtails is because they can jump <laughs> and they have a little spring in their tail and they definitely can't survive very long in the house if you, if you live in a, in a dry climate like we do here. Uh, they definitely need enough moisture, otherwise they'll dry out and desiccate. So believe it or not, I've been getting into another hobby, and that is five-gallon terrariums. And I have a little five-gallon bottle here. And I had this bottle set up for quite a while, and I had a bunch of plants in it. And I think I watered it once. And it, I didn't water it for like a whole year or maybe a year and a half and the plants actually kept growing and then I kind of ignored it for like three years and all the plants died. <laughs> and then originally it just had a little bit of soil in the bottom and, and kind of, uh, I think I put activated carbon and uh, I can't remember exactly what I put in there but I just had, it was mostly gravel, uh, like a gravelly layer. And then what I did this time is I actually put some peat moss some sphagnum moss, uh, I, I laid it down here, and then I put some coconut husk, uh, like a, I think I put eco earth in there, and then I put a really high quality potting soil. And then what I did is I went to the nursery store, one of the local nurseries, and I bought these plants. These are pretty amazing plants. And this, believe it or not, this was like thirty-five dollars worth of plants, <laughs> and it all came from their micro. Um, it was almost like a the fairy garden section of their plants, and they're not supposed to get that big. And I thought it was it would be really interesting to actually put my isopods and my springtails in this little bottle and kind of have a totally enclosed environment. I just have to remember to water it. <laughs> but, I mean, you can. it seems like, from, from what I've experienced with this, it seems like you only have to water it like once every six months and just a little bit. You definitely don't want to drench it. And I'm thinking about, um, I actually have some wild moss that grows in the summer underneath my deck, maybe throwing some moss in there. And then maybe if I can find some uh, really tiny little dainty mushrooms, and throw them in there for some spores and I, th I think it would just be kind of a cool little micro environment if I got some springtails and isopods in there maybe it'll kind of be the the garden tenders of my little the micro garden which is pretty cool alright guys so that's the update for my isopods and my springtails and I'm really getting into it for the first time and kind of exploring new territory and I find it extremely fascinating especially 
the diversity of the isopods and I'm thinking in the summertime I'm going to have to take a trip up to the ski areas and maybe I can find maybe a brand new species or something that's really neat and you know maybe I'll start cultivating it here at home and start selling it at the reptile shows I, I'm thinking it would be a, a pretty good hit so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time